Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another painting. This time it is a 7 by 10 inch painting of a northern cardinal. I painted these guys before, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to do something a little different this time. Um, often in the past when I've painted these, I've had them on subdued backgrounds, and I thought it might be fun to have uh, bright male cardinal in front of some outrageous fall colors. So if you keep watching, you'll have a peek at how I created this one. I started the painting by putting a wash in on the background on dry paper. I had several pre-mixed colors varying from yellows, oranges, and greens, and reds, and covered the paper with those. And then I intentionally kind of spattered some colors in to create back runs in the paint. I wanted kind of that, uh, the paint to kind of mix unevenly on the paper. And so here I am adding some yellows and uh, kind of to control where some of those colors are going to go. Once I had those down, I decided I wanted to have some more reds in certain places. I was careful to put a lot of the reds away from the bird so I'd have yellows and greens behind it. Um, since the bird's going to be red, that would really help pop it off the page. At this point, I started rendering in um, some darker colors so there would be some layers of what will look like um, leaves fading into the background, which will give it a little bit of realism, but still playing a lot with the... Um, accidental back runs and things on the paper so it would have a fresh look to it and not overly rendered. At this point I peeled off all that liquid frisket revealing the white of the paper and then transferred my um, pencil sketch so I'd have a good reference to work from. Then I started washing in the lightest local colors. Um, I do most of these paintings on Windsor & Newton 140 pound hot press paper. I like painting in blocks because that uh, keeps the edges of the paper nice and tight and uh, I can work right off to the edges of the page. You can see on the left my photo reference. I'm actually painting the reference I had that this pose was from was from a female bird. Uh, I thought that that would, the pose was really fun, but uh, I kind of wanted to do a male bird just to be a little more showy on this one. So I'm trying to cover all the paper with the lightest local colors. I believe at this point I'm using a number four round brush. The bark has a real shaggy texture that took a while to paint. In this particular painting, I was not concerned at all with, you know, tight realism as far as every last nook and cranny and colors being completely accurate on the branch. I wanted to have fun with the colors and just brag all, all that, the saturation of those colors up is kind of as high as I could get it, which is kind of unusual. Usually you try to have subdued areas in your painting too. Um, in this one I wanted to really, uh, really emphasize the, the saturation. You can see that I use a lot of orange when I paint uh, red birds. So I'll do a lot of yellowy orange colors where the highlight areas are going to be for the cardinal. And then I'll work to the cooler reds, the alizarin crimsons, and even some purples in the shadow. Once I blocked in the basics of the branch, I, I kind of wanted to have just the overall light dark colors in. And then later I decided to push that more in a purple direction, which would be... Uh, kind of a fun, fun saturated uh, color for the shadows. And here I switch to a number uh, two round brush to start in with all these details. You can see there's the purple I'm using on the, on the side. That's dioxazine purple. That's a nice, uh, nice one to use. So I started pulling, putting that into the shadows underneath the bird. A little bit of browns in there too, but mostly uh, a lot of those purples. So I think that's cadmium red medium I'm washing in over the bird mostly at this point. 
and just building glazes of layers on top of that uh, orange for the highlight area and moving more toward the alizarins end of things, the, the little bit cooler reds in the shadow areas. There are little lichens all over the top of this branch, and those were kind of... Uh, I didn't want to paint every last uh, wrinkle in the lichens. I have in the past, but this time I didn't think it was necessary. So those were kind of uh, some fun aqua and green colors to paint in. Let's see that in a little bit. So that number two round brush was getting a real workout on this painting. And there you can see I'm pulling in some alizarin crimson for the shadows. Um, I'm painting under the loop now to get the details in the eye. And I think that's a 10 odd brush, those little crisp details. And putting in some of those fine feathers on the head too. So here comes another layer. This time I browned down the purple a little bit by adding a little bit of uh, I think I had added a tiny bit of the cadmium red medium to the dioxazine purple, and I think I also added a little bit of uh, thalo blue. So you can see it's starting to take some of that shape in the deeper shadows, but I still wanted it to be read from a distance as kind of a browny dark color, but to have uh, a lot of purple, a lot of saturated color in there. And you can see the lichens are starting to take some shape too. A lot of time was painting little lichens and wrinkles in the little leafy areas there. And there again you can see the reference for the uh, the bird. I will often screw a, a, a stick onto the bird feeder and then as the birds come in, they like to land on the stick and I can get good photos of them in a more natural environment rather than just sitting on the feeder. So that stick was on there for a while and then I'll take it off and replace it with another and take different photos. You can see I'm darkening it up and I'm using some blues for the uh, blues for the shadow areas and the lichens, and I'll carry some of that down into the purples for the branchy parts, too. A lot of this I was just kind of picking out little uh, fiddly details just to give texture to the the lichen areas not necessarily trying to paint a lot of detail or suggest that it's a specific species of lichen but just to give an idea that it's a kind of lumpy blue green stuff there which for this was good enough I think that was that looks like it was thalo maybe mixed with a little cerulean and I think I also was bringing in a little bit of uh, phthalo green just to knock back the, uh, the intensity of those a little bit. That's a pretty color. I tried to have some areas of the light can be a little more greenish and some a little more bluish. I thought that would be more interesting than having it uh, all completely uniform and it would go well with that spattery colored background too. Now doing this one, I wanted to have, I knew where the bird was going to be red, but I wanted to have some of those red elements somewhere else in the painting, so that was why I chose to have the red off to the sides in the background of the fall colors. I thought that might be a fun, fun way to move your eye through the painting a bit. This is going in, this looks like it's cadmium red uh, light or medium, probably light. Back to the lichens. 
many, many glazes of color. It ends up building the reality. And at this point, I was trying to bring in a lot of little dark um, details to the cracks where things were overlaying. That tends to crisp up a lot of things without doing every last detail. If you can pick out just the right uh, highlights and just the right shadow areas, you can build a lot of form pretty quickly. Here I was using alizarin crimson to deepen some of those colors. You can see from the palette, I'm not working very opaquely at this point. It's fairly transparent, it's just many layers of it building up and that ends up giving it a sense of uh, texture. Well, late in the painting, I tend to do a little here and a little there until I feel that it's finished. And uh, I definitely had the bulk of it done but uh, there are a lot of little details to pick away and get the lichens right, add some cracks and crevices, and here I was finishing up the feet. A lot of, a lot of detail in feet. I always look at the feet when I see other bird painters to see how well they did them, because often neglected, and yet when they're done right, they look really cool. And bird feet are kind of weird. Sometimes they have, uh, they look like little dragon toes or something. But they're fun. I like doing them. Maybe I'm crazy. So here I am. This is a 10 aught brush, and I'm just picking out little shadow details just to really get the final little crisp edges to make the painting look right in its finished phase. So pretty much just adding in a couple of shadows, and at that point I was pretty much done. Yeah, that was it. So that's the painting. That's a male northern cardinal. And uh, it was only a 7 by 10 inch painting, so it's a little guy. Um, well, there's more information on this painting and lots of other ones on my blog and the website, so be sure to visit those when you get a chance. Uh, thanks for watching the video.